Terry, thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Sean. Terry, this past year you served as first vice president. This year, stepping up to be president of IPSA. What goals do you have set for yourself and for the association as we roll into 2015? Well, thank you for asking, Sean. Uh, the goals for the IPSA for 2015 are, are wonderful. Um, I've got uh, high expectations that we are going to continue on the momentum that we've been on for the last five years, increased attendance in our annual, con our annual uh, con conference here. Um, and. Uh, the uh, uptick we've seen in, in uh, our education committee and scholarships. Uh, we had five scholarship winners this year and uh, I want to see that the association continues on in the path like that and having having to do five scholarships a year would be uh, something that I would I feel is key that uh, uh, our younger generation, uh, we've had uh, people talk here at the meeting about uh, you know baby boomers and Generation Y, Generation X, but uh, we really need to concentrate on our uh, the young people coming into agriculture. Uh, it, it is a bright spot and uh, we need them to uh, recognize the independent seed sector as, as an area that they, they need to, to look at and uh, there's a bright future there for them. We're down in Tucson. There, there is a lot of excitement with the, with the members here. There, there seems to be kind of a palpable excitement about where the association is, where they are individually. Is that the sense you got spending a few days down here? It definitely is. Um, you know, we've never really had uh, a situation with the independent seed sector that we've had in the last uh, uh, three to four years with so many different new products. Uh, product offerings. Yes, there are challenges with uh, foreign governments and, and getting approvals, but we have more options available to independent seed companies today than we've had in in uh, decades, quite frankly. So uh, it's really exciting. It's an exciting time in the seed industry. Lots of good stuff going on. What, what do you see as the some of the challenges or threats perhaps Looking into 2015, I'll ask you to bring out your little crystal ball there sure. and see what you see. Well, obviously, it's it's no secret. Uh, one challenge uh, that I have coming on as president is uh, is putting a new CEO in place for uh, the Independent Professional Seed Association. Uh, Greg Ruley was a, a wonderful uh, a CEO for the last 10 years and has done a great job. Uh, I, I'm very confident uh, we've gone through the process and vetting and, and that uh, in, in first of February we are going to have an awesome announcement and uh, that uh, we're going to keep the momentum of the uh, independent seed trade uh, going forward. You, last year you participated in a panel discussion that uh, the Bayer was putting on a mobile tour uh, called the Bee Care Tour. Yes. Obviously trying to focus the importance of bees on our business and in Correct. agriculture in general. Um, what do you see as a role for IPSA going forward as, as it relates to that topic? Uh, you know, IPSA or any of the seed trade associations, um, we really need to advocate for our industry and uh, uh, part of the Bee Care Tour was obviously the, the focus on uh, people saying that neonicotinoid seed treatments are causing the colony to collapse of our beehives and uh, just had an interesting discussion with a gentleman uh, here in our trade show that that uh, is in the seed industry but also does uh, honeybee production himself. There are a number of things causing the, hun the, the colony uh, collapse, uh, it, whether it be the varroa mite, whether it be a linear uh, a linear genetic path of the queen bees, um, there's a number of things, but uh, uh, we need to advocate that we do need neonicotinoids, and uh, I just got a, a notice that the uh, comment period is, uh, the EPA is uh, extended till January 22nd, so things that we are getting out to our members that we need to make the positive comments about what uh, seed treatment do for our industry, um, that they really do provide a lot of value for the uh, American farmer and, and basically food production in whole. Um, we definitely empathize with uh, beekeepers and, and uh, want to work with them 
to solve the problem because obviously bees are are essential in the food chain. Um, there isn't a, a seed company out there that, that isn't uh, reliant upon bees and what they do for agriculture. Uh, but we you know strongly feel that there are a number of other items that are, are causing that, not neonicotinoid seed treatments. Um, you know, you if you don't have that, you do foliar applications that that would further uh, hurt uh, the bee population potentially. So uh, it, it's just uh, showing uh, showing that we have the ability to to uh, uh, be a steward of the land, uh, put polymers on our treatments, and uh, and put it so that we're putting that insecticide in a place that doesn't actually hurt the bees. And awareness is a big deal too, right? We we I mean I have conversations with independent seed companies pretty much every day. And, and I think one of the things that they're looking for is how to better have that conversation when it comes up. I mean, we've all been in that situation where we get challenged on something and giving them the tools so that they can, uh, that they can have that conversation. Exactly. And, and that's, uh, the, you know, giving the tools out to members to talk to, uh, whether it's the farming people or the general consumers about it, is, is, a, is one item that I am going to uh, partake on this next year in IPSA. And that's, it's going to be part of member services, uh, saying that we need to advocate for ourselves. And if we need slide decks, uh, we need to talk to Rotary Clubs or we need to talk to Lions Clubs and get out and, and talk to people that are consumers, uh, whether it be about neonicotinoids or whether it be about GMOs. Uh, these aren't four-letter words. These are, these are part of our food system today, and we need that to, uh, to uh, feed a growing world. Absolutely. So now I'm going to ask you to take off your President of Ipsa hat and put on your President of Mustang Seeds hat. Okay. <clears throat> Mustang Seeds has had some expansion over the last couple of years. You've got a, a bulk facility now in, uh, in South Dakota as well. Yeah. Um, independent seed operations like yours are, are, are not only surviving, but they're thriving. They are. Why do you see this model working in an industry where Lots of folks are going to tell you that consolidation is the uh, is the only path. You know, and, and for the last ten years, we've seen that. Uh, right now, the independent seed sector and Mustang Seeds has seen it a, a wonderful growth. Uh, we've put up three locations of bulk sites uh, uh, to help our growers get better access uh, and, and uh, to our seed products and also our dealer system. Um, regionally selecting hybrids for um, our location um, has, and our geography has been a, a key tool in Mustang Seeds. And it, you know, it's a relationship business. And our customers know that we have their best interest in, in heart. Um, I have said it before, we report to our customer, we do not report to Wall Street. And that really seems to hit home. They know that we have access to the best traits and genetics and, and anything that they are, are needing uh, on their farm as far as seed products, um, we have it available to them. Right. Right. Farmers are looking for, I mean, you don't have to convince a farmer that independent has some merit to it. That, that's about the most independent group of people you're ever going to find in, in America. So, 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 <laughs> yeah. so they drink the idea of, of independence. What is it from a business standpoint that you think means the most to that farmer when it comes to working with an independent seed company? You know, I, I think the... Uh, the ability, obviously, it's a relationship. Uh, the ability that you care in what they're doing, that you, you know, are focused on their geography, that seems to be a big part of it. Uh, family, they know that um, that we are Mustang Seeds is a family-owned business. Um, they enjoy that aspect. Obviously, most uh, most producers are family uh, family farms, uh, and and a lot of times they get uh, you know even a a black eye in the in the community or in in the media uh, that uh, well they're corporate farms. Well, um, you know what these corporate farms have four families living on them, uh, and uh, so yes, they are a lot larger today in economy of scale, but at the end of the day, they're still a family uh, business and so so is Mustang Seeds. Well said, well said. I look forward to uh, seeing Mustang Seeds continue to succeed and I uh, wish you the best of luck in your term as uh, president of IPSA. Wow, uh, thank you very much, Sean. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you for, for sitting time. down with me today. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Yes.